So it's 9 p.m. my time. Uh, it's, that's UK time. My name's uh, Dr. Ben Shogla, and welcome to this webinar. Um, it's a short webinar this evening on simple ways to integrate music into the classroom. Now, I want to introduce myself quickly. I'm um, one of the founders of Scoob Music. We create inclusive uh, music technology and are all about trying to facilitate creativity and get more people engaged in making music, particularly young people, and uh, facilitating educators and really working on inclusion and interactivity. Uh, we've been doing that for many years and I'm hopefully going to share some of the things we've learned along the way with you this evening. Um, quick sort of overview, so we'll look at quickly about some of the concepts around music and try and dispel some of the myths around that and then I'm going to look at some examples, both low tech, low cost and some involve, some involving tech, some higher tech things and how those can be um, impact in your classroom. And also no need to be a music teacher. Um, this is a no experience necessary, but if you are a music teacher or you have a bit of musical knowledge or a bit of instrumental skill, these are things that you could really take further and, 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 and go wild with. So yes, welcome. And if there's any questions, please just uh, enter them into the chat box to uh, the open questions and I can answer those as we go along. So hopefully my mic's picking up and recording. I'm not gonna be sharing the screen of my tech this evening. Um, and that's just a minor um, link up issue. I think I need to update my iPad, but uh, we're focusing on music and interactivity and making that easy. So first thing in terms of introducing that, I wanna talk about um, music and, and just think about it a bit and really sound in music. And what we're gonna look at this evening is looking at, um, Music as something that you, it's not something, it's not about performing music, but think about music as something you take part in. So it's not about um, having to perform or hit some kind of standard. Music is something, it's human behavior. Music is something we do with other people. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be loud, it can be soft, it can be crazy, it can be wild, it can be sweet. It can be all these things and it can just be a joyous noise. But the, most important thing is to make it interactive and to make it inclusive and to give people the opportunity to take part. And I think that's one of the most fundamental things. It's what music is designed to do. It's, it's, it's really what it's for in a social nature is, is, to, is to bring people together and give them opportunity to play with sound and make sounds together. And, you know, it's amazing that we can take that so far as to make it art, but in many ways, it's just about having fun and making a noise. So let's think about music as something that we, we engage in and we take part in, and particularly in the classroom. And it's that opportunity to create uh, uh, opportunities for social inclusion, for interactivity, to include everyone, and give students a chance to participate. That's what we're talking about. And interestingly, you know, from our work in special ed, the, you know, the barriers that you know, some people face due to physical accessibility needs with instruments are really, you know, are echoed by if you don't know how to play an instrument, you are disabled, you know, you cannot play it, you cannot access it, you have an access to those needs. So if you don't have to play guitar, you have a guitar disability. So these things kind of, you know, cut across those boundaries. So music is something that we take part in, something that we, that we participate in. And then the other thing I wanna talk about very briefly is thinking about sound, not as something we listen to, but as something we play with. And that is really important, is trying to get uh, students and get your class playing with sound. Thinking of sound as something that is almost a, a tool, something you can use for different things, but really making sounds, playing with them. It doesn't have to be fancy again. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be uh, just simply clapping your hands, okay? Or banging some pots and pans or making some noises. It can be boom, doom, or ooh, uh, any of these things. And we can look at that and if we start playing with it, once you start playing with sound, you start to create music. When you start playing, getting individuals playing with sound together, you start to create groups, you start to create interactivity. It's a beautiful opportunity for including everyone and it makes music. So let's think of sound as something that we play with and music as something that we actually actively participate and take part in. And that's the basis of what we're gonna look at this evening. Um, so uh, I think on the on that that's something that interests you as well. There's a, we've done a TEDx uh, recently that we'll pop a link to in the mail after this about technology and inclusion and and thinking about music in this different way. So we'll, we'll send a link to that. So 
having a think about playing the sounds first. Okay, so even so, if you, if you're lucky enough to have um, a great music room and you've got lots of instruments and stuff, great. And if that's the case, or access to some of them, you don't even have to know how to play them. Even just trying to make some sounds with them is is a beautiful experience. It's fun, it, you know, just plucking some strings on a on a guitar or a cello, blowing into a, a trumpet to try and get a sound out of it. But just getting that playing with sound, exploring sound, it's very much. It's, it's almost innate, it's how we learn to talk, babbling, playing with sound and engaging in these different ways. So you can do it very simply from a low tech start in terms of just getting students making sounds. Sometimes if we're thinking about um, special ed situations where children or young people may have difficulty with their physical control or making sounds themselves, we can use technology like Scoog and iPad and we're gonna look at that very quickly uh, and how we can do that. But let's start off with a really simple example, which is what I call a student beatbox, right? Now this is this this can work for young kids and for old kids, older kids as well. Really great thing. And what you what you're going to do is you know take a small group and say have have five students and give them each a sound. So right, your boom, your your so we have boom. So that's just we'll just do I'll just do three of them just now. But imagine giving students some different sounds. It can be any sound. And then you get other students to hold the students who've been given the sounds hands. Right. So this student has that person's student's hand and holds out their hand here. And then what you've done, what you can do, so each student who has a noise that they're gonna make is holding another student's hand and then that student is putting their hand up. And then you can have yourself initially or another student and you touch the hand of the students in the control spot and they then, when they feel a touch on their hand, they will squeeze the student's hand and that is the key for the student to make the noise. So when you get the hand squeeze, you go boom, or hand squeeze, and if you just, by breaking them up like that, giving each a single sound and having someone, you can just literally touch along the line and they'll squeeze, 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 and you get boom, cats, boom, cats. You have a beat. And you can start to play around it. And you can see how then you could have, you know, take different students, uh, have them in this conducting role of touching the hands of the squeezers. And they can touch in different ways, start creating different beats. It's loads of fun. You can switch the students around, have different students making different sounds. And it really explores this idea of as soon as you start playing the sound or putting an order into sound, or start organizing the sounds in a sequence, you start to create music, you start to create rhythm, and that's from nothing. Um, you can do some really cool stuff with technology if you have access to it around this. But that simple idea is if you have, you know, you can rotate the students out of five who are making sounds, and then you can have five more come in and they you can choose them different sounds to make. You'll get lots of laughs, you'll get lots of fun. But this is it's just truly interactive. It's really social. It puts, there's a lot of peer collaboration going on where you've got some of the conductors and the guys in the middle who are kind of transmitting the information. They're, they're acting and they're part of it and it's a way of including the whole class. When you're talking about younger kids, you can, you know, sometimes with young kids, maybe you, maybe you cut out the middle, the, the squeeze guys, and just maybe touch each student on the head and get them to make the sound. Loads of, loads of ways you can see that working. You can use uh, color flashcards and create color sequences if you want, you know, so assign each student color and then go blue, green, red, blue, and they play blue, green, red, blue. Loads of ways you can do that. And that's just using, just using voice. Or you could even start using, you know, you could use books, you could bang on a table, you could, you know, you can, you can do all kinds of stuff. You could tap a ruler, some rulers together. And, but what you want to do is give each, each student an isolated sound to make. And then you take the, so they're, they're not having to play an instrument. They're not having to kind of be sort of something complicated. They just have to make that one sound. And then you place the decision about when to make that sound with another student or another group of students, or another individual. And it takes that kind of social fear of, am I doing it right? And you're just so you're, you know, okay, when, when you feel the squeeze, you make the sound and someone else is putting it together. It makes it social. It makes it easy for everyone to be involved. So that's a really great low tech example of playing with sound. Let's let's evolve a bit of tech now. I have a Scoog here set up. There we go. Let's get this on. And Scoog is a tactile interface specifically designed for uh, a range of abilities. It works great if, uh, for those with physical challenges or learning difficulties or just if you don't know how to play an instrument. So this works great in a mainstream class as well. So moving on from just using vocal sounds or clapping or from bodily sounds or you know sounds in the environment, we can now start to look at uh, using 
uh, musical sounds, but I'm actually going to use a different app with Skoog to start off with here to show you this. So this is the main Skoog app on iOS. It's free. Um, Skoog's, um, you purchase hardware, comes with all the apps. Um, at any point, if you want to get in touch with the team at Accessible Tech, which are our guys uh, in uh, based in Denver, then we have specialists there who can talk about um, designing some kind of uh, you know, bespoke solution for your needs in the classroom, which is great. But um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at another app, right, on, on iPad, which is called Scoop Scratch, which is a sampling app. So you can hear I've got these kind of tiles here. And this, is, this will sort of hopefully maybe bring to life this idea of having the sound, having to think of each of these as a student. Now we can do this with samples here, but thinking back to what I was saying, so we can go Right, so now we've got and now with the Scoog, I can, I, can, I can actually play that in. So let's make sure my Scoog is connected. Connected, here we go. There we go. Let's calibrate it. And... So just by touching, I can trigger the samples. This gives, this really ramps up the interactivity. Let's clear that again. Let's go for a different set of sounds. So we go, ah, uh, shh. Let's do this, so. What a little piece of music happening. Now Scratch is great because it incorporates a recording function. So you could have that running. You could have students doing different patterns um, and recording that and start to create tracks that are just made from sounds that you find. And something like this in combination with iPad really ramps up that interactivity and that ability to include students of, of, of different levels. So whether you have a, a using Scoob to address maybe a physical need or just a, you know the, the fact that maybe you don't play instruments or just to include more people. Because the other great thing with this as well is obviously is more than one person can be on a different side and can play it. So you can ramp that up and this can be included with some students making vocal sounds. So it's just this idea of getting playful with sound, okay? And really um, using the technology to lower the access point to that. So for, for some students who may not be able to vocalize or face some challenges in coordination, something like this in combination with the students who can vocalize can really bring that together. So you're you know, lowering the access point with technology, you're creating that opportunity for participation to play with sound. And that's where you get the include, you know, inclusive kind of musical experiences happening. And you're really opening people up and freeing them to take a slightly different view of music. It's, you know, it's not about being the next Beyonce or the next Jay-Z, although I know, I'm sure they're all out there, but it's about having fun and playing sound. It's called playing music for a reason. And that's because it should be fun. It should be, it needs to be interactive. And it's, uh, yeah, it's something that we're really passionate here about at Skoog. Now, that Skoog as a sampler and sort of using these kind of found sounds. Um, the other great thing with this, this technology in terms of um, what it can offer is in, it, in its kind of core functionality, it does, oh, we need to reconnect it here. I'm changing apps there. Just turn that off. There we go. Let's connect it up. And so if you don't, you know, so, so there are a couple of things with music, you know, when you start to look at melody and using instruments, like these things, then you kind of have to think, well, wow, do I have to know my scales? Do I need music theory? And with technology like this now, you can really go for those instrumental parts without the need for the theory. But if you have the theory and you have the learning, then you can take that even further and you can start to create really beautiful interactions. But one of the great things with Scoob is it uses preset pentatonic scales, which means that, And you can hear there that all the sounds fit together, they're in the same key, and it's a bit like knowing your scale, it knows them for you. So this type of technology can really do that. So using this kind of pentatonic setting on something like Scoog can really um, open up this kind of idea of playing with sounds. And you can imagine how that would work with maybe some vocalizations, like bring in some instrument sounds, and you know, you've got a band, you've got that working. Little tip for you, if you do have iPads, obviously GarageBand is a fantastic platform. It is just, uh, there's so much you can do there. And even just using it to make some sounds and explore some sounds, perfect. So let's you know, open up, if we look at the, um, the piano here for starters. Now, 
normally you would see a keyboard like this. So. Now it's got all the, the keys, and, but you know, it's like, how do you start to get sort of more playful with that? Now, what Scoob does is it uses these scale settings. Now there are some in GarageBand that you can use. So along the bottom here, you can't quite see it, but at the end uh, of the keyboard is, is a little button that has scale written on it. If you touch that, it gives you a choice. And if you just choose major or minor pentatonic, let's try major pentatonic. Look, the keyboard changes. It doesn't have the white and black keys anymore. I don't know if you can see that. There, you can see it there. And now if you listen. I mean, uh, I sound like I know what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm not a piano player. I'm a bass player uh, by trade. So the, this is far too complicated for someone like me. I normally deal with just four strings and that's enough. So, but by limiting the sounds uh, through the app or through the device into a pitched scale, which you can do without having to think about it, just you know, two, two some options, then you create this opportunity to improvise. and play with some sounds. Now, GarageBand has hundreds of sounds. You can access all of those with Skoog. You've got Skoog's own sounds. You've got the sampler there uh, in Skoog with Skoog Scratch that lets you start playing with sounds. So explore sounds, give students opportunity to, and, and if, you know, if you have some shy students who don't want to use their voice, you know, get them making a sound, you know, clapping or doing something different or even you know, hitting, hitting two books together. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. But again, if you have access to some uh, classroom percussion or you have access to some players or something, just get them out and have a go with them. It's, that's really crucial is, is having a go and getting sound happening. When you have sound happening, then people can take part in it and they can contribute. And you have that opportunity for activity to happen, have that opportunity for that social inclusion and for communication and for participation above all. So that's really a, a, a fundamental thing. Um, so I'm just going to do one thing here. Um, I'm, 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 I'm doing this webinar from my home and I have a French bulldog which has just started snoring uh, ridiculously. So I'm going, to, I'm going to eject the bulldog uh, from the, uh, the webinar room, if that's all right. Just give me two seconds. So here we go. Just proof that this is happening. So um, this, this is the culprit. This is Shy. Say hello, Shy. Hello. Right, she's going to have to go out because she's being a bit noisy and making too much snoring noise for this. So we're going to pop her out. There we go. So apologies for the interruption there, but it actually um, happened at quite a good moment because this is moving into the second part of the webinar now where we're going to look at music. So we looked at playing with sound and now I want to look at playing with music. Uh, music is something we, we take part in. Okay, so we've looked at playing the sound, using samples, using uh, voice, using different kind of naturally occurring sounds. And now I want to look at, look at using existing music. So recorded music, music by artists. So we're gonna look at, again, some tech versions of that, but we're first gonna start off looking at some, some low cost, easy options here to get things happening. Now, one of the most amazing resources at the moment for being able to access music for free is well, Spotify for one, but also YouTube, okay? Just, I mean, when we started this webinar, I was playing a track from YouTube and that was just going on. So what I'm gonna say is, so one of the things you can do is engage the students, find out what they want us to, find out what they're listening to and start listening to it in class. Make some time each day in your class to listen to some music, but not just listen, let's get some participation in there let's see how we can we take part in that now there's two really easy solutions to this that sound a bit silly to start off they sound a bit crazy but actually they are one of the simplest ways of getting music or musicality happening so you can offer students the opportunity to choose some some tracks you know, you know ask them you know what you know what their favorite thing is at the moment and obviously if it's appropriate for the class because you know with lyrics and stuff you have to check that but you know finding some favorite tracks that they really like playing them on youtube and listening to them, discuss and talk about them but the two things that you can do to make them interactive without you know having to put upon people having to be able to play an instrument you know, you're not talking about 
people coming and playing along, is offer students, if they have a favorite track, offer them the opportunity to play air guitar along to it or lip sync, either as a group or individually. And by doing that, you know, even if they're just jumping around going, wow, 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 you know, just pretending to play the guitar, by pretending to play the guitar, they will be exploring rhythm, they will be exploring expression, expression, I can't speak this evening, and, and above all that, all that, how that in, builds into musicality and how they're feeling and listening to the track. And you can get groups of them playing together air guitar or lip syncing together. You know, it's, it, you're actually participating, you're taking part. You may not even be making sound, but by actively engaging with the tracks, actively engaging with the song through bodily movement and, you know, and, and, and by using, moving, moving your mouth and moving around, that's when you're going to get that engagement and you, you have music happening there. And that's going to be a real platform. It, it will be fun as well. You can have that as a kind of, you can even have that as a kind of competitive kind of got talent kind of thing where you have, you know, lip sync battles, you know, all these things. But they're not as trite as they sound. So a lip sync battle, you know, if you've got people who want to, you know, who are enjoying this and getting into it, they are actually, you know, even without singing, they will be exploring all of those key elements of expression, rhythm, um, that really are the fundamental bases of musicality. And that's what you're really trying to get kids to participate in in music. So really easy. It doesn't have to be YouTube. They could bring in CDs, you know, or, 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 you know, or even tape uh, or, or vinyl even. Let's go further back. I don't know, whatever, whatever medium you need them. It's probably, or, you know, you know played play on, on an MP3 player or a phone. It doesn't have to be um, online. So it can be YouTube. It can be clips of music anything like that, but get them interacting with it. And one of the first sort of entry points for that to get them interacting is talking about it. So why do you like this song? What are the sounds in it? What kind of instrument sounds can we hear? Do you know, is that guitar? Have we got drums? All that stuff, okay. So use the internet. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's an amazing resource, apparently. Um, but yeah, it's so much stuff out there, so many great things. And YouTube is a fantastic resource and, and really good for that. So, Moving on from that, so imagine, can you imagine, imagine if you could, those students who are, are thinking about lip syncing or, 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 or air guitar, if you could offer the opportunity to actually play with the tracks. And then thinking again in terms of special ed, those students who would maybe not be able to physically do the air guitar thing or the lip syncing, that kind of stuff, how, how can you get them or how can we get anyone interacting you know, tonally with instrument sounds with a track like that? Well, it just so happens that with something like Scoog, Okay, this has got some amazing functionality. One of the most brilliant things that, that more recently has happened, you know, with access to listening to music, with things like Spotify, where we can access all kinds of tracks. And with Scoob, it has an automatic link into iTunes and Spotify. So I can choose Spotify here. It's going to ask me to sign into my account, and I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. There we go. As an example. Yeah. So now I'm going to choose a track from my playlist. So I'm going to choose, I don't know, you, can see, you probably can't see it, but this is a Don't Worry, Be Happy by Bobby McFerrin. So hopefully you'll be able to hear it. And it's reversed, but down here on the bottom, it says something in, called, so it says B major, which is something, which is musical code for what key it's in. You don't have to know anything about it. What it's done though, is it's automatically set this to work with this. So you can have this track playing. So that can be that enables any student. So the, the accessibility of Scoog for younger users, it's very easy to trigger and make sounds. Just have to touch it. You can use with you know different parts of the body. Or students who don't have instrumental skills can immediately begin playing with the music that they want to listen to. So this it, this this kind of platform, this idea of making music participatory, playing with it as opposed to just listening to it. You know, you don't have to be creating it all from scratch. You don't need a full orchestra. You don't need a band with everyone there. Although if you've got those things, fantastic. Make use of them. Get those instruments out of the cupboard. Play around with them if, if you're allowed to. I mean, you should probably ask permission first. But um, 
I say get in there, start making sounds, start collecting them together, start ordering the sounds either by using simple games like the squeeze hand game or these kind of things where you start to create a, a, a sort of human sampler. It's a bit like um, I don't know, I've heard of something called a cats and clavier, which is a you know using uh, different animal sounds to make a to make a, a kind of keyboard or a mouse or and there's some interesting examples on the internet. So let's make music interactive and it and it doesn't have to um, you know be complex and there's technology now like Scoob and GarageBand that make that that bridge into it uh, using technology ever so simple you know and, and really ramps up the interactivity. Um, if you have music specialists available to you then they're going to take this type of approach or they're going to and they can take that so much further and really engage you know things and take that learning you know that experience and that passion further but it really is about making that point of interaction available in your class listen to some music every day make time for music each day let the students be involved by letting them choose what music that they want to share you know give them that opportunity to explore that you know different these different kind of cultures and things so um that's that that's the two kind of key things that i wanted to really talk about is you know playing with sound in a variety of different ways with just voice by using things like you know, scratch on on a, an ipad using garage band or just using uh, things from the classroom to make sounds look at ways you can order those sounds you can a really cool thing you can do as well is is using a dice uh, to con sort of create a composition so you can, you know, just, you know, by saying, well, we'll make this sound one, this sound two, this sound three, this sound, you know, assign a number, roll the dice a few times, write the number sequence out, and there you've got the pattern in which to play the sound that you've divided up. Composition by chance. It's, it's, like, it's like John Cage, you know, a, a top person. That's, that's one of the things, you know, please explore these different things. And then if you have access to technology like Scoob, where you can start to add instruments without the need, for instrumental um, skill or even um, knowledge on behalf of the instructor or teacher. This is something you can play with together. You can have a, a really level playing field, whether it's for the, for the uh, you know, the, the, the parent or the teacher or whether it's for the student or the class, you know, you can all get in there. So that side of it, and then also looking at using existing music. So don't be scared of, 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 of tracks, you know, don't be scared of the hit parade. Do they still call it that? Have I showed my age? That's terrible. But yeah, to use music that people are listening to, that they want to play with. You know, have fun playing with playing air guitar. Have fun doing lip syncing. All of these things bring that bring that interactivity into it, and you will be musicking. It doesn't have to be um, Tchaikovsky at, at the Royal Philharmonic Hall. It can be a bunch of you making kind of funny noises with your mouth at the back of the class. That, that's fine. That's, in fact, maybe it's better. So make it interactive. Use existing materials. Use music you, you, that people are listening to. Make it age appropriate and culturally appropriate in that sense. You know, if people are, are, are into grunge, then, then let explore that. Let's let, let the class go down that avenue. You can use technology like GarageBand and, and, and Scoog to really ramp that up and create that interactivity, start recording sounds, playing with them, recording stuff. And then one last uh, little thing um, just to touch on, which I think is probably quite cool. Um, let's have a look at how Garage uh, Scoob can work with GarageBand very quickly to take those two elements of playing with sound and working with kind of existing sound, existing music and stuff to kind of create instruments. See if we can do this very quickly. So we've got, got my Scoob here, it's connected up. I'm going to turn MIDI on in my Scoob and turn sound off. So this just means now I can play in GarageBand. Now I've got GarageBand open on the piano just now. So now I can play the piano with GarageBand. But that's not what I want to do. What I want to do now is GarageBand also has a sampler. So if we go in here, what a sampler does is record sound and then it kind of spreads it across the keyboard to make notes. So what we can do now is we can record a sound and make an instrument out of a sound that we just create. So we're going back to that first point where we started of getting students to create sound and play with them. And we're going to turn that in into an instrument that we can play. So an exciting thing for that is you can you know, take a voice of a student, now whether that's a student who doesn't vocalize and has challenges and give them the opportunity to be musical with their own sound or whether it's just having fun by taking a student's voice and making it sound crazy. So let's, let, let's make a sound. So let's try this. So there's a start button here, dead simple, just touch it. And you, ah! So there we've got a sound. 
not a great sound. And oh, there we go. It's already it's already on my Scoog. It's connected in, so I can play it with the keyboard. It's a bit weird, but with Scoog, it's set with those scales. So now in Scoog, if I um, I can play around with the um, pitching of that, so we can make it very. Pretty cool. Okay, or we could make me sound like Alvin. Oh, that's too, that's like a bat. It's too high. A bit too high still. Let's try this. So there you see already, you know, it's fun. You're taking the element of vocalization, kind of simple approaches to sound and ramping that interactivity up with technology. We can then take that and use that in GarageBand in different ways. We can also, again, use the scale button in GarageBand to create a scale with that. And I just play around, have fun with it. Now, the other great thing in GarageBand that you have, and this is this last little tip here, and this is actually good, and then we'll come back to a very simple way of using it, is, so it has these thing called smart drums, okay? So we can, all right, that's not, well, smart drums are cool, but I'm, I'm actually gonna use, uh, yeah, let's use smart drums and you can just drag in some different drum elements. It starts to create a beat. Okay, turn it off. There's a little dice here that then mixes it up so we can come here, get a student to come on, try a different beat. Keep doing that until you find one the class likes. And you have something going. And then honestly, get them to clap. Something as simple as clapping to a beat is music, it's timing, it's expression, it can be a group activity, you can syncopate it, and it's using some existing, so this gives, I mean, something like the smart drums and garage band is an infinite number of different beats and drums and sounds and styles that you can explore kind of even randomly, if you like, with your class, you know, giving each, you know, each day, you know, have someone else choose one of the, the beat settings and then getting everyone, you know, break the, the class up into two halves, and getting one to kind of clap with one one drum sound, one to clap with another, and, and sort of having them all kind of you know, teeing off against each other. You can then start to integrate maybe some of the air guitar and stuff in that. You can see how these things start to open out. And if you have the opportunity to incorporate other technology like Scoog or other iPads and other garage band instruments, then you've got a real opportunity to involve everyone uh, and create a platform for kind of a really, explorative approach to music and a really creative approach i mean it's free and allows people just to run with it so that's um that's my kind of tips there uh, and i think uh, that's as the half an hour the tips on looking at different ways to, to kind of bring music into the classroom i think hopefully you found it engaging and useful and uh, hopefully you know it's a, a nice mix of some tech and some high tech and low tech so whether it's some simple games using voice, using found sounds, using physical things in the class, or whether it's using technology like Scoob or iPad and GarageBand, then uh, there's a range of different ways you can incorporate this stuff in. I do feel, I'm very passionate about the fact that I feel that technology days can really ramp up the interactivity that you can engage students with. And uh, I think that's a, a huge benefit nowadays. And, you know, a lot of schools have some technology kicking around, go and ask, see if you've got some iPads, you know, see what the, see what's in the music room. And you, know, you don't have to, I think that's another really important thing I'd, I'd love you to take away, which is, you know, you don't have to be the music teacher to have music happening in your class. And it doesn't matter whether you are a, um, you know, secondary, uh, a, a class of 16 year olds who are all uh, maths geniuses, is, or, or whether you're doing a, a a uh, history class or, or a music class or whether it's a life skills class or whether you're working with toddlers you know any any of these instances music can be part of that day music can have something to add to that class whether it's exploring something in relation to the topic music of a certain period of history uh, music related to a particular character to a social theme or whether it's just allowing students the time within the day to spend some time listening to music or introducing students, other students to music they're into, and then finding ways to make that interactive, you know, find those ways, allow the class to, to discuss these things, talk about it or interact with it. And don't forget, 
always start you know with making it playful and allow students the opportunity to create and play with sounds whether it's just themselves or with some technology you know, and if you if you need technology to help ramp up and assist with that like i say you can always get in touch with with our team and our, our specialists are, uh, are there to help you um explore these things you could book a demo with a member of our team and they could take you through various different ways that technology can help in this sense uh lots of things you can do so uh do uh, follow the links uh, supplied with the the webinar follow-up we'll be sending some links out with some information um or you can get directly in touch with the team at accessible tech and thank you for joining and i look forward to seeing you on our next webinar take care goodbye now